Hey everybody, this is Wake Angel 2001 and I got this package in the mail a day ahead of schedule. It was sent to me by uh, B. Serrano who uh, was doing some middleman service for me. So <clears throat> let's just use the knife to cut the tape on the lid. Which I am folding out of the way so that the addresses are hidden. And we got Bobiam. It's the supersonic figure from Jack's Pacific. Ah, uh, he included the whole box thing. I told him that he didn't need to do this so that we could send a smaller package. But that's not all, because he also sent Oh, this one he takes out of the box. The 4-inch Mighty! The very first official Mighty action figure! Look at that! And, um... Mighty's accessory... Ooh, that's a big one. I was not expecting it to be so big. And... He also... See, this is what I was expecting him to send, not the entire sealed up thing. But yeah, look at that! Mighty and, uh, Supersonic! Basically the original figures of Wave 2 as, uh, Wave 3, I should say. Because, uh, Wave 3 also has a re-release of Dr. Eggman and original Sonic. But why are Sonic and Super Sonic in the same wave? They didn't vary that up a little bit more? Like, we, anyway, there was a re-release of Sonic in Wave 2, wasn't there? Like, at, 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 he comes with a purple Chaos Emerald this time, but... Seriously, at least do a re-release of Shadow. You only did him once. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, take a closer look at these guys. Okay, so here are Mighty and Supersonic taken out of the packaging. Speaking of which, let's take a quick look at their cards just for a moment. This necessitates a bit of a zoom out and to scroll the camera upwards. Here is Mighty's card. As you can see, it has a cartoon drawing of classic Sonic on it, whilst the modern figure, Super Sonic, comes with a CGI render of modern Sonic. So that's a, that's a cute little reference to, to how the age progresses, especially with the YouTube videos uh, showcasing how these two characters look. On the back, we can see the other characters in the wave, as I mentioned during the unboxing portion. Uh, it seems that they've re-released Sonic again with a Chaos Emerald this time. Um, I really hope that we are going to be getting away from the tyranny of so many re-releases, because so far, Sonic has been present in all three of his waves. And some might argue that a Chaos Emerald is a pretty important accessory, so it could feel like they're trying to pressure us into double buying him, which is a practice that I do not like. Okay, so that's about all I'm going to say about the packaging. Let's take a look at the figures themselves. We have us, Mighty and Supersonic. So let's talk about them one at a time. Let's take a look at Mighty because he is the first classic character that Jack Pacific has put into scale. And he is the first Mighty action figure basically ever. I mean, Jack Specific did make a Mighty figure that was like a little statue inside one of those balls, but this is the first one that's an actual figure. So his articulation has a neck swivel, uh, universal joints at the shoulders, no elbows, but there is a bit of a natural bend to his arms, so he doesn't look too stock straight. And um, although I feel like they're bending the wrong way. They should be bending like... From, when you look at the side, they look straight, but from the front, they're bent. Like, they should be lined up differently because it's a little bit awkward to try and, like, pose him. Like, there, I got I got a nice waving expression, but, like, I just feel like the elbows aren't bent right because you got you to gotta do weird stuff with the shoulders in order to make them look a little bit more natural from the front, and that, I just don't like that. He has universal hips, although his left hip seems pretty loose. It won't even support his foot. I do not like that. Might have to do some tightening of that later. The right one is fine. He has the same swivel cuts at the knees, uh, so it's a pin disc knee, and good ball joint ankles. And it looks like they cut into his sock to make sure the ball joint has a really good range. So this figure 
um, in principle can stand quite easily. If it wasn't for that loose hip, I would have more confidence. But yeah, it seems that his other hip can compensate and he does a pretty decent job. Um, so there is one big controversy and that is about scale. Uh, this figure is about four inches tall. So he is a little bit shorter than the modern scale Sonic figure, but I think that's only because of his spines. Like, these characters are pretty much eye to eye, which is weird. And I think this might have to do with yet another height retcon. Remember in Sonic, in Sonic Generations, they showed that Sonic was, classic Sonic is distinctly shorter than modern Sonic. Um, but they wanted to still say that modern Sonic is one meter tall. It's roughly three foot four. So that apparently that reduces Sonic's uh, classic Sonic's height to barely over two feet. But apparently not. Apparently, even though he looks shorter when they're standing next to each other in Sonic Generations and Sonic Forces, they actually are the same height of three foot four. It, it, it's the Mario controversy all over again. Like, Mario is supposed to be 5'2", but he's also depicted as being the same height as Sonic when they're next to each other. So, like, we're kind of coming across the fact that uh, the biographies are BS. And this is the first, like, this is the first time when it's actually kind of clashing. In fact, why don't we take a quick blast from the past? Bam! This is the classic Sonic figure made by Jazzwares. And as you can see, they're pretty much perfectly in scale with one another. I mean, that looks really good. They look great next to each other. So if you already have the uh, ja the Jazzwares Classic Sonic, then there you go. Uh, so it comes down to, like, do you prefer your character to have elbows or knees? Because apparently with classic characters, you can have one but not the other. <laughs> it's, that's just uh, how it's going to be. Um, so... Here is a depiction of modern Sonic that actually would scale. So, you know, like, there you go. Uh-huh. All right. His accessory is the ring box, and it's pretty big. Like, I did not expect it to be this big. It's, like, it's it's twice as big as the ones that I made um, as a minifigure commission. Then again, mine were made to scale with three-inch figures, not four-inch figures. Um, and... Oh, quick spoiler, um, Super Sonic comes with the exact same 10 ring item that the original Sonic came with, so, actually no, I think Shadow came with this one, so it's 100% it's a reused item. Although, if you think about it, this is 10 rings, this is 10 rings, they're, ex they're the same item, haha, -ha. at least functionally. I also like how they gave it scan lines, like an old-fashioned TV set, like um, with a cathode ray tube and all that. I find that to be quite amusing that they would actually go so far to get that detail in. So, um, so yeah, let's get a quick turnaround of Mighty. He has that big blue, that big red shell. He has a tail. There's a gap there, so, you know, apparently this isn't completely flush up against his skin. But then again, they could have just left this so he could still have a neck swivel, which is a good thing. Whenever I make Mighty Customs, I can't really give him a neck swivel because the thing is stuck to his back. So, yeah, this is a very good classic Mighty figure. The only issue that some people might have with him is that um, he's not quite in scale with the modern cast unless you want to accept another weird retcon. So, you know, do with that as you will. Other than that, Classic Mighty is a win. So, what about another extremely popular character, Supersonic? Oh yeah, everybody loves Supersonic. Um, so let's just get the camera centered a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, uh, he has a holding thing hand. Let's, uh, so you can totally get that in there. Like, yep, yeah, I got 10 rings. That's 10 more seconds of superpower. Uh, he has his usual stern expression that they gave him in his supersonic face. And they did paint it white, so it's like you can see his teeth slightly through it. So he, he does kind of have a super grimace going on. Just like with the um, regular Sonic figure in this scale, he has no elbows, but he has universal shoulders. I got a little bit of a... It's not affecting the functionality, but there's like a weird deformity in the sculpt of that joint. 
not completely sure how I feel about that. Oh well. There's a little bit of a ball joint in his wrist, which gives his, his hands some wiggle room. Universal hips, and unlike on the Mighty figure, these are nice and tight. They don't, they can easily support the weight of his leg. Uh, he has the pin disc knees and the ball jointed ankles with lots of room inside the sock cuff for the ankle to roam around. So just like, just like that, you can actually get um, supersonic to stand very easily, I might add. Like, I never... I've always had a hard time getting supersonic figures to stand, but this one can stand so easily. Uh, quick comparison, here is the 5-inch supersonic figure made by Jazzwares. And um, I'm genuinely surprised I can understand that easily. Look at that, high rock. Um, and uh, this was from the 20th anniversary set, so there was a classic supersonic in there too. So, you know, like... Like, it's funny, because now classic supersonic and supersonic modern are the same height too when you take the jazz wars into account like i don't know i i think it's really weird that they that jack specific chose to scale mighty this way when they 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 went through the effort to make the tails figures shorter so he wouldn't appear too tall in scale but with the classic figures they're going with this blatantly putting them out of scale that this seems like a really weird decision to me but that being said, the two original components of this upcoming, of the coming wave, um, this, this was sent to me from California, so I have no idea how long it's going to take for them to reach me here in New York, but they should be coming to stores soonish, hopefully, and hopefully distribution will be like, they'll actually get a significant number of them instead of one wave arriving with like six figures in the box, it'll sell out in two minutes and then they'll be gone forever, leaving you looking on the internet to hope that you can find some that the scalpers aren't gouging too badly on. Uh, but yes, that is my judgment. Supersonic and Mighty the Armadillo are really good. Um, are we going to see a modern Mighty the Armadillo? I'm not sure because technically a modern Mighty has never been in a video game. He's only been in the comic book series. But, um, you know, like, I'm sure that this will fill in um, quite a missing link in many people's collections. And hey, for old Jazzwares collectors, you finally have something that scales with your 5-inch Jazzwares figures. So, uh, now you have something to put next to, um, Sonic the Werehog, regular Sonic, and, um, the few Black Knight characters that they made. So, there you go. Alright, so that has been the unboxing and review of Supersonic and Classic Mighty by Jack Pacific. Thank you all for watching the video, and this is Wake Angel 2001 signing off.